welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Ashley Hurley. Thank you for joining us. A reward is now being offered for information leading to the successful prosecution of the individual or individuals who stole a large National Park Service arrowhead from the park entrance. The sign is located at the National Park Visitor Center parking area in Middlesboro and the sign arrowhead is valued at $1,300. According to park ranger Aaron Scott, the sign was stolen sometime between January 28th and January 31st. Chief Ranger Gene Westlow strongly emphasizes that the stealing of any park property is a federal offense punishable by a fine or imprisonment or both. If you have information on the theft, you can call the park's 24-hour tip line at 606-246-1089. If you prefer to speak with a protection ranger, you can contact Chief Ranger Westlow at 606-246-1054 or Ranger Scott at 606-246-1081. A man wanted by the Virginia State Police is behind bars right here in Claiborne County. According to the Claiborne County Sheriff's Office, 31-year-old Travis Hensley of Farragut was stopped by the Virginia State Police for speeding. During the traffic stop, troopers state that his car ran into a guardrail and he got out and ran into the woods. Canine teams with an aviation squad along with the Lee County Sheriff's Office searched the perimeter but were unable to locate him. A wanted hit was placed on Hensley for multiple charges last Thursday. On Sunday, an anonymous tip was made to a Claiborne County Sheriff's deputy that led them to a home where Hensley was located. He was taken into custody without incident and transported to the Claiborne County Jail where he awaits extradition back to Virginia. A string of break-ins occurring in Middlesboro is a close copycat to the same set of break-ins that happened almost a year ago. The number of vehicle break-ins is on the rise and the area being targeted are driveways on 25th Street. According to reports, thieves are breaking into cars at homes overnight, stealing valuable items leading to several cases being reported. Officers say the best way to prevent a break-in is to lock your car and don't leave valuable items lying around, such as electronics and phones. Neighbors are also taking to social media now to spread the word that cars are being targeted. Millsboro Police are asking that if you see anything suspicious in your neighborhood, to report it at 606-248-2020. If you plan to do any outdoor burning, the Tennessee Department of Agriculture Division of Forestry wants to remind citizens that you will need a permit through May 15th. The winter storms wreaked havoc across the state, bringing down limbs and trees, and burning is one of the best ways for landowners to clean up that debris. If you are burning a pile that is smaller than 8 feet by 8 feet, you can obtain a permit by visiting burnsafetn.org. For larger sizes, you will need to call to obtain a permit by calling Claiborne County's local division at 423-869-8275 Monday through Friday from 8 in the morning through 4.30 that afternoon. Bur burn permits are free and residents should also check with your local city and county governments for any local restrictions. Once you have obtained a burn permit, please remember to follow these tips. Develop a bare soil perimeter around the fire and notify neighbors and local fire departments in advance. Have a leaf break and access to water for fire control. Be aware that wind can blow the fire in the wrong direction. Stay with the fire until it is extinguished. It is illegal to leave an open fire unattended. The Tennessee Department of Agriculture Division of Forestry works to conserve, protect, and enhance forests that cover half the state and provide jobs, timber, clean water, wildlife, habitat, and recreation. You can visit tn.gov slash agriculture slash forestry for more information. Coming up after the break, a free and fun event is just around the corner to find out where it is taking place and when. Stay right here.
joining the Vive Broadband TV revolution. Vive gives you the freedom to choose with loads of new channels like Up TV, The Hub, The Blaze, and Cubo. Vive's Watch TV Everywhere feature gives you the freedom to watch participating channels just about anywhere, anytime, on any device. And Vive Broadband Speed gives you the freedom to power internet TV services like Netflix, Hulu, Apple TV, and Google Chromecast. Join the TV revolution at vivebroadband.com. Don't worry, the 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Okay, time for the team obstacle course. Yay! What this place needs is more healthy kids. To get involved or donate, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. If I got to go to college, oh my goodness. I like discovering new things. You get to see what works for you and what doesn't. That helps you evolve as a person. You get to make like a, a supernova of skill or talent or whatever it is. I've always wanted to go to college. I just feel like that's my destiny. My name is Queen, and I am your dividend. Back the Bears, or Be Educated and Responsible Stewards, invite you to join park staff and friends at the Cumberland Gap National Park for a special celebration of bears on April 24th and 25th. The special event will be held at the Park Visitor Center featuring exhibits, special presentations, kids activities, demonstrations, and the event is free and open to the public, so the park invites you to come out and have some fun. Part of the presentation will include information on how low harvest of food sources left black bears throughout the region with little to eat going into their winter hibernation. This means that when they are waking up from their long winter nap, they are also waking up wanting a snack. This is leading to them roaming further through spring and summer looking for food. One thing they are asking is that you please keep all trash and food stored properly. And you can do your part to spread the word and be there April 24th and 25th. Coming up on Sunday, April 12th, the Pediatric Medicine Club at the DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine will host its annual Kids Health Fair. The Kids Health Fair will take place from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock at the Harrogate City Park and the community is invited to attend. The event is open to the public and free. This year, the Kids Health Fair will be pirate themed and children are invited to come dressed up as a pirate. There will be games and fun activities that will include a treasure hunt, walk the plank, pin the hook on the pirate, and face painting. Keeping in line with health and medicine, LMU DCOM students will be providing healthy snacks and will showcase what's in the doctor's bag, giving children and their family the opportunity to see and learn about the tools that doctors use daily. Parents, don't forget to bring your child's immunization records to be entered into a raffle for great prizes from local establishments. The Lincoln Memorial University Share Club will be hosting a Toss for a Cure Pink Out Cornhole Tournament to benefit breast cancer research on April 11th. The tournament will begin at 2 o'clock in the Mary Mars Gymnasium on the LMU campus. The entry fee will be $10 per team, and teams of all ages are encouraged to participate. Registration for the Cornhole Tournament will begin at 1245 and will end at 145. Any team not registered by 145 will not be able to participate. T-shirts and pink wristbands are available for pre-order. Admission is free for all ages. For more information or to order a shirt or bracelet, email lmushare15 at gmail.com or call or text 423-526-4472 or 423-300-4395. Coming up on April 17th and 18th, the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum will host Lincoln scholars from around the country for the 2015 Civil War Symposium here on the main campus. The symposium is titled, War in the Mountains, Five, Religion, Death, and Martyrdom, and the Civil War. The symposium will address issues facing the nation at the end of the Civil War. 
featured speakers for the event will each address portions of this experience from their studies of Civil War casualties or the faith used by President Lincoln, the soldiers, and civilians to understand the losses. Director of the Abraham Lincoln Library and Museum, Thomas Mackey, will open the program in the Hamilton Math and Science Building here on the main campus. The symposium is supported by the Dr. Robert L. Kincaid Endowed Research Center. The symposium is free and open to the public. Registration, though, is required, and for more information and to register, you can contact Program Director Carol Campbell at 423-869-6439. You can support the Pat Summit Foundation and enjoy a day of paddling on the Powell River in the first ever Powell River Kayak and Canoe Regatta in Tazewell. The event is being held on Saturday, May 2nd. The regatta is a 12-mile race along the Powell River beginning at the Wellness Conference Center. Entry fees are $25 for single kayak events and $45 per boat for double kayak and canoe events. For more information, on the first ever Powell River Kayak and Canoe Regatta, you can check out the information on the Claiborne County Chamber of Commerce website at claibornecounty.com. Although it was spring break and a holiday weekend, sports continued here on campus and to bring you all the scores and highlights, Adam Haley's coming up right after the break. Okay, so what would you bring to my company? What do you need? I need problem-solving skills. I got through high school without a car, a phone, or a computer. No college degree, though. Not yet, but life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. Right, mi cariño. So like I said, everything I learned about cooking, I learned from grandma's empanadas. Shall we go again? Yep. Mix beef with the onions, the onions with the peppers, the peppers with the paprika, the paprika with the garlic, the garlic with the oregano, the oregano with the cumin. Got it? Got it. Throw on the olives, stir, season, stir again, pour out the flour, roll out the dough, make a circle, drop in a fistful of filling, fold over, press down, and ta-da! Hmm. Most parenting is hard to do in just two minutes. But two minutes twice a day making sure they brush is easier, and it could help save them from a lifetime of tooth pain. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund reading. No. <laughs> Let me try. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out words. Playing world music. What? I give up. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. King. Gold fish. Stay up, Stay up, the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back. We'll start on the baseball diamond where the rail splitter spent this past weekend entertaining the Mars Hill University Lions. While Mother Nature won the game on Friday, the two teams came together on Saturday to get the doubleheader in. The Lions got on the board first in the first inning in game one on an RBI single by Dalton Isenbath only to be matched by an RBI single by LMU's Nick Morabito in the bottom of the first to tie the game at one. The two teams each scored another run, Mars Hill in the seventh and LMU in the ninth, to send the game to extra innings. In the bottom of the tenth, it was LMU's Riley, Ryan Burleson who drew an RBI walk-off walk to win the game 3-2. Burleson also picked up the win on the mound in relief, going three and two-thirds innings, allowing seven hits but no runs and striking out one. In game two, it was Mars Hill once again opening up the scoring, getting on the board in the third on an error by Burleson. But LMU would answer with a two-run fourth and a two-run fifth provided by a two-RBI triple by West Nederland to give LMU the four-to-one lead. The Lions would strike again in the sixth and seventh, but it wasn't enough as LMU would complete the sweep with a four-to-three win. Grant Painter picked up his fourth win for LMU, going six and two-third innings, allowing two earned runs while striking out four. 
Now at 20 and 17 on the season, the LMU baseball team will travel to Frankfort, Kentucky on Wednesday to take on the Thoroughbreds of Kentucky State before getting back into conference play with a three-game series with Coker over the weekend. The LMU softball team also had Mother Nature take over their series with Lenore Ryan on Friday afternoon. Their series with the Bears was moved to April 16th. However, on Saturday, the Lady Rose Splitters were able to get in their series with Queens. LMU came into their matchup with the Royals in 10th place in the conference standings, which would leave them on the outside of the conference tournament. Game one started out good for LMU as Amanda Snow used a sack fly to score Emily Solomon in the first to give LMU the early lead. Queens would tie the game up in the third inning on a throwing error and then take the lead in the fourth after scoring three runs. LMU's Jennifer Moose hit a two-run home run in the sixth and Amanda Snow hit an RBI double in the seventh to tie the game back at four and send the game to extras. Queens and LMU both scored in the eighth and it was Snow once again connecting on a single in the bottom of the ninth to record her third RBI of the day to give LMU the 6-5 to five win. Samantha Smith went the full nine innings from the circle, striking out six in the victory. Game two did not go to extras, but was still good for Splitter Nation. The Lady Rose Splitters scored one run in the first inning, two in the second, and one more in the fourth as they went on to a 5-2 to two win. Amanda Snow added another RBI in game two, as well as picked up the save in the circle. Brianna Taylor picked up the win for LMU going six innings, giving up no earned runs and striking out two. The Lady Rail Splitters are now 14 and 18 on the season and 5 and 7 in conference play, which has them back in a tie for the eighth and final tournament spot. They'll go on the road for a non-conference doubleheader against King University on Wednesday before going on the road to, on Saturday to face Catawba. And as always, these games are weather pending. The LMU lacrosse teams were on the road this past weekend to complete their first season of South Atlantic Conference play in Brevard, North Carolina. The LMU women were still looking for their first conference win in program history, taking on a Brevard team that was also looking for their first conference win in program history. Brevard's Alyssa Bar Barrett scored the first of the Tornado's 15 first half goals in the first 37 seconds of the game as it would be Brevard getting the historic win on this day 20-2. Autumn Beddington and Brieza James scored the two goals for LMU. Beddington and James now combined for 32 of LMU's 34 goals scored this season. The Lady Rail Splitters season will end on Wednesday when they go on the road to face Young Harris. The LMU men were in the same boat as the LMU women, still looking for their first conference win in program history. LMU struck first on a Justin Stewart goal three and a half minutes into the first quarter. The two teams would trade goals back and forth throughout the rest of the first quarter into the second quarter. And the Rail Splitters and Tornadoes went into the halftime break tied at three. LMU's Adam Golia scored in the third quarter to even the score back up at four. And that was a score when the fourth quarter buzzer went off, sending the two into overtime. LMU won the faceoff, but Billy Kofsky's shot was blocked, and Brevard's Alex Bazell scored for the Tornadoes after a timeout to lift Brevard to the 5-4 to four overtime win over LMU. The LMU men will now finish up their season on Saturday at home against Ashbury, with the scheduled start time being 1 p.m. The LMU women's tennis team came into last week still looking to advance to the South Atlantic Conference Tournament. But this past week was a hard one and a shot to their chances as they dropped to Tusculum 8-1 earlier in the week. And then over the weekend, they fell to Newberry by a 5-4 decision. The two split the singles competition, but the Wolves took two of the three doubles matches for the win. The loss puts LMU needing to win out and get some help to go to the postseason. The LMU women will be back in action Tuesday at home against Queens before traveling to Banner Elk, North Carolina to face Lisa McRae in non-conference action on Wednesday. They'll finish the regular season in Jefferson City, Tennessee on Friday against Carson Newman. The LMU men's tennis team, like the ladies, is still fighting for a conference tournament spot and was in good position for one until this past week's losses to Tusculum 8-1 and to Dewberry 5-4. Now at 5-4 and four in sack play, the Rail Splitters are a half game up on Newberry and one game up on Mars Hill and Coker for a tournament spot. They will also be at home on Tuesday against Queens University before traveling to Lees McRae on Wednesday and Carson Newman on Friday to finish off the regular season. And finally, as you know, spring is finally here and with it comes opening day of the baseball season. While the Major Leagues open up the regular season this week, the Tennessee Smokies will open up their season on the road on April the 9th against the Mississippi Braves. The Smokies will open up their home schedule on April 15th against the Pensacola Blue Wahoos, 
with the first pitch at 11.30 a.m. Now that's all for sports. However, stay tuned. Joseph Lewis will have everything you need to know about the box office from last week when we return. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. Tops at the box office this weekend were unsurprisingly led by Furious 7, dominating in its debut with a killer $143 million take, making for both the biggest Easter opening and the biggest April opening of all time. In only three days, this latest installment in the hugely successful franchise grossed nearly as much as the original film did throughout its entire theatrical run and will certainly continue raking in cash until the summer movie season officially kicks off with Avengers Age of Ultron in May. Following at number two was last week's winner, Home, with the animated film adding $27 million to its now $95 million domestic gross. And rounding out the top three was the buddy comedy Get Hard with $13 million. Other titles like Cinderella, Insurgent, and It Follows continue to perform well, and given the relatively unassuming set of releases slated for the rest of the month of April, that trend should continue. The coming weekend heralds the opening of the latest Nicholas Sparks adaptation, The Longest Ride, starring Scott Eastwood and Britt Robertson as a couple intertwined in a story of tragedy and lost love. Alan Alda co-stars, as well as HBO favorites Jack Houston from Boardwalk Empire and Una Chaplin from Game of Thrones. The film can be seen in theaters nationwide starting this Friday, April 10th. The 10th will also be marked by the expansion of Noah Baumbach's coming-of-age dramedy While We're Young, which stars Ben Stiller, Naomi Watts, Adam Driver, and Amanda Seyfried. The film has slowly but steadily continued to draw money in its limited release, taking in half a million last weekend with a $14,500 per theater average at each one of its 34 screens. Intriguing art house releases for the coming weeks include Olivier Assayas latest adult-oriented drama Clouds of Sil Maria, which stars Juliette Binoche as an aging actress who spirals into existential crisis after becoming involved in a revival of the play that made her famous. Kristen Stewart, Chloe Grace Moretz, and Brady Corbett co-star. Another title to watch out for is Ex Machina, the directorial debut of Alex Garland, the writer responsible for pinning Sunshine, Never Let Me Go, and Dread. Dom Hall Gleason, Alicia Vikander, and Inside Lewin Davis' Oscar Isaac star in this hard sci-fi story about artificial intelligence and the ethics involved in creating and destroying life. Both of these titles will see a limited release in the coming weeks, and the buzz surrounding them suggests they will perform strongly well into the start of the summer. That's all for this week in the world of movies. I'm Joseph Lewis.
Yeah. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Looks like it's done. Don't let salmonella get funky with your chicken. On average, one in six Americans will get a foodborne illness this year. You can't see these microbes, but they might be there. So learn the right temperature to cook each type of meat. Keep your family safe at foodsafety.gov. This new mom is struggling to get the skates just right. And now she's holding on for dear life. Her kids can see she may have broke her knees. They still love her, though she looks like she's attacked by killer bees. I'm allergic. You don't, don't have to be perfect to be the perfect parent. Thousands of siblings in foster care will take you just as you are. And that is going to do it for this week's LMU Community TV News. Thank you for joining us. For everyone behind the scenes, I'm Ashley Hurley. Join us next week.